Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wigging Out with Bobby Z, hosted by me, Bobby Z, and it's another Wiggy Weavy Wednesday, so that means I'm posting a new video, as you can see, because you're watching it. Um, sorry I didn't post anything last week, I went home to Pittsburgh, and, and I ended up getting stuck there because of weather in the city, although everyone I knew here said it wasn't that bad, but that's besides the point. So today I'm going to show you guys how to properly clean a lace front how to properly block a lace front, and how to properly pin a lace front onto your head. Um, this is mainly for theatrical lace fronts, um, things that are actually hand tied and not the thick plasticky laces that you buy at a wig store. Now you can use these same principles for a wig store lace front with the, the thick plastic lace, but those really don't, um, those don't really fray as much as a normal lace front does. You have to take care of a lace front wig properly so that the lace can last as long as possible. The theater we usually leave the lace long so the lace lines will usually hit to you around here. So usually hits to about maybe an inch above your eyebrows usually down to the side of your eyebrows and down like that. However if you're going to be wearing these things out in public such as being a drag queen or just if you don't have hair and you're wearing one or you just swing your lace front, lace front for fun, you want to trim it back a little more. However, most people will trim theirs back all the way to the hairline. I don't like to do that. I like to leave at least a little bit of lace so that I can properly block it and take care of it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to clean your lace front. Now, there's many different ways of doing this. This is what I personally use. You'll need is you'll need rubbing alcohol. The higher percentages are better. So if you can only buy 75, that's fine. But if you can buy the 80% or the 91% or even the 99%, that's the best because it disinfects faster and it also will dry faster. So I have mine a little pump like this, and you most and I have it labeled so I know what it is. Um, most of the time you'll see these at the nail salon, and they'll use them for acetone or for nail polish remover. You can get them at a lot of beauty supplies that also have a lot of nail supplies, or you can order them on the internet from a nail supply store. They're great because then you don't have to turn the bottle upside down, you don't get it all over your hands, you don't spill it. It's great because you just take it and you press down on the tab and it works. You will also need gauze pads. Now, I have mine in a little canister like this. When you buy gauze pads, they come like this in a little package. There are, it says these are 12 ply and that there's 200 in a pack. Now, you only really need two to four when you're cleaning a wig. It depends on how gummed up the lace is. So one of these will last you a very long time. And they're worth the price. They're a couple dollars. Sometimes you can find them at a CVS or a Rite Aid. But most of the time you'll have to go to a medical supply store. Um, and they're usually in with bandages and stuff like that. I've also seen people clean lace with acetone instead of alcohol. And I don't use acetone unless, it, unless I used glue. Now, if I'm using glue, I'll use the acetone. However, you don't want to you don't want to use acetone on a synthetic hair wig. If you if your wig's human hair, that's fine. Use acetone all day; it's fine. However, if you use acetone on a synthetic wig, you'll melt the hair, and I know that from experience. Not a good idea. So, if your lace gets gummed up with glue and it's a synthetic wig, just fill a small basin or even a, an old ashtray. Like clean it out, of course, first. Fill it with um, with alcohol and then soak the lace bit by bit in the alcohol and the glue will, after a while, will just dissolve right off and then you can peel it off. Now I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see this um, on my computer. I'm going to like turn my camera down a little bit. Like my shirt? It's cute, right? Kermit Frog. So here's my lace front, as you can see. There actually is some glue residue on this wig because it was glued down in a previous production. So as you can see, that's the lace. As you can see, the lace is a little frayed on the ends. That's what happens when you have a lace wig. You want to take your two pieces of gauze soaked in alcohol or acetone or whatever. And you want to put one underneath and you want to put one on top of the lace. And generally, I like to clean underneath the lace because that's the part that's on your skin. That's the part that's going to get makeup on it. You want to clean your lace front every time you wear it. That way you don't get glue buildup, you don't get makeup buildup, and you don't get that nasty line across your forehead. 
Also, you want to clean it before you block it so that way you don't get your blocking tape or your wig block dirty. If you own a lace front, especially a hand tied one, you should own a canvas block in the size of your head. I cannot stress this enough because it'll keep its shape, it'll last much longer, and it's worth the investment. Plus, they're only between $30 and $50, which isn't really that expensive, especially if your wig's hand tied. It's well worth the investment. You'll need pearl head pins, which I talked about in my favorite things video. You will also need glass head sewing pins, or any kind of sewing pins will do, much like these. See, mine are on a grab it. You don't want to use metal tipped pins. You only want to use ones that have a ball tip on them. You're also going to need a spray bottle filled with water and blocking tape. I always use bias tape. You can buy this at a sewing supply store or at a sewing notions store. You want to take your wig and you want to put it on the block. Now generally I will kind of put the lace in the front down past where the hairline is. I will hold it and then I will pull the back down to get it in place. You can also, if the wig is styled, you can hold the wig in your hand and you can wiggle the block into it and then prop it up. That's the easiest way if it's an updo, but if it's just down, you can just do that. Now, you wanna make sure that your wig is centered on the block and you also wanna make sure that your hairline is where you would like it to be. And like, um, also when you're trying to make sure that your wig is centered, you don't wanna pull from the lace. You want to pull from the wig foundation behind the lace. That way you don't rip the lace or stretch it. Two of your pearl head pins like this. And I call this Mickey Mouse because then you get little two little stubs up here and it looks like Mickey Mouse ears. I don't clip the back of the wig up when I'm blocking it, but for demonstration purposes I am so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, if your wig is a machine made back like this, you'll see the corner tabs right here and you'll have the tag in the middle. And along the bottom are the little are the little holes where the little bra strap hooks go to make it tighter or bigger. What you wanna do is you wanna pull that down. Now, if you're, just, if you're just blocking it just for storage or if it's gonna be worn down, you just wanna block, you just wanna pull it down to about where it sits. If you're gonna be roller setting it and styling it into an updo or something like that, you wanna pull it down pretty much as far as possible that way you get all of the extra space for your head and your hair underneath. You can see the bottom edge here. You wanna take your pearl head pin and you wanna put it through that bottom edge. And then you wanna put it into the block and you wanna go diagonally up and towards the center. So the pins go like this. That way when you pull down on it, they're not gonna be able to be pulled out. If you put them in down or you put them in straight up, if you pull the edge of the wig down, they'll come right out and that's no fun. Take your other one, pull the edge down, do the exact same thing. I always block the back of my wig first. That way the front lace will lay down. If you block the front lace and then you pull the wig down in the back, sometimes you'll get a bubble behind the ear or even in the temple area because of the way the wig's constructed. So I figured it out if I, if I put my two pins in the top to hold it in place, pull the back down and block it, then block my front lace, the front lace will always lay flat. You wanna take your trusty pick comb, which I talked about in my favorite things video, and you wanna comb all of that hair off of the front edge of the lace. Sometimes the, you know, it'll fold under or it'll get down in your face, especially if the wig has bangs. You just wanna make sure that it's up out of the way and it's not gonna be blocked down with the wig. Next, you take your blocking tape and your spray bottle and you wanna spray the blocking tape in your hand. As you spray, you wanna roll it and work it around so that you get moisture all the way through it. And then I like to go like this to get all the extra water out and to make it nice and smooth. You wanna take the front center section of your wig. I like to start where the hairline starts and I like to drag my blocking tape down to the edge of the lace. Now, you want the lace to hit in the center of your blocking tape. You don't want it to extend past it because the lace lays flat against your forehead and it doesn't flip up. The second it starts to flip up, you get a visible line and it destroys the illusion you're trying to make. So, start at the, at the hairline and drag the, the blocking tape down until you have the, the middle of the lace line in the middle of the blocking tape. Then take your glass head sewing pins like this. 
I like to do two in the middle. I know people that only use one in the middle. So once you have your center blocked, generally what I like to do is I like to pull the side tabs down a bit and I just put a pin in gently, just, just a little tiny bit in there, barely in there at all, just to hold it down into place. As you can see, the pin is just sticking out. I can still, that just holds the lace down and it helps you get a tighter block. Then what you do is I like to, again, start the hairline, pull the lace down, aim at the center of the block, or aim for the center of the tape, and just block around with the pins. Making sure that the edge does not extend, the edge of the lace does not extend past the edge of your blocking tape, and making sure you cover all of the lace with it. So then, once I get to the corner right here, so the lace ends here, and that's where my corner is. I will put one pin right at that corner, right where the lace stops and right where this ribbon is, and I'll put another, I'll take this pin out that I just put there to hold the lace down, and I'll put that right above it to make a straight line. And then all you do is you just stretch, you can stretch the tape back, and it makes that right corner just like that. And you just block two more right there. If your lace is very, very deep, you can block another one right there in the middle. And then you pull this forward. And you keep it down. And then you repeat this. Again, I'm going to show you the corner trick again. Pull the lace tight. I'm going to put one piece, right, one pin at the corner, another pin straight above that. Pull that tab back just like that, keep it nice and taut, make that corner. And then fold it forward and pin. Now, if you're gonna be setting your wig, brushing it thoroughly or completely restyling it, I like to add other pins right at the hairline just to keep the lace from stretching. And you do that by just taking your small headed pins again, and I just will put them right at the hairline where the hair stops. As you can see, it's entirely blocked and I put my little pin, my stabilizing pins at the hairline. And that will keep the hairline from stretching and pulling the lace. Now as you can see, I did a really quick prep which was just a band and a cap and I just clipped it into place. I'll do a wig prep video at a later date. Now what you're going to need are three inch French hairpins, which look like this. You can buy them pretty much at any beauty supply, however, most of the time they'll have ball tips on them. You don't want to buy the ones with ball tips because the ball tips can rip your lace. You can buy them like this which out, without the ball tips. Sometimes they can be a little sharp, but usually they'll have a coating on them and once when they're new, they're not so sharp. Once you have them for a while, they'll get a little sharp. Just toss them. You also will need small French hairpins, also without ball tips, which look like this. Not a good idea to use the big ones with ball tips. You only want to use the thin, thin, thin ones without ball tips. I took my glasses off, so I'm going to be kind of blind for a minute. Putting on a wig myself, I prefer to dive into it, which means I will take the wig this way, and I will hold it upside down like this. I will hold it by the back and I will aim my forehead into the wig and then I will pull it up over my head like this. And you flip the hair over. You want to make sure the back's down. Then you want to make sure that the front edge is centered. So you want to make sure that the ear tabs are centered. Again, pulling from the foundation of the wig and not the lace front itself. Your small hairpins that I showed you, again, without the ball tips. So you want to start at the front center. You want, again, want to go back to where the foundation ends and the lace starts. And you want to go just straight back. You'll feel it go into your hair. Sometimes if the pins are cheap or if they're old, they'll scratch. In that case, if it scratches you, pull the pin out, grab another one, and keep going. Now. I like to pin all across my hairline going straight back into my prep. It's a little awkward doing it on yourself, but you get used to it. 
I'm used to pinning it on people. And you don't want to, you don't want you want to leave this bottom inch and a half or so of lace free. And I'll show you why for in a minute. Next, you want to go to the other side again, pinning back behind that hairline. Not only does pinning right at the hairline can that can that punch holes in your wig, you also they'll also be visible, especially if it's a blonde wig and you're using dark pins. You don't want to do that. All right. So now I have the front part anchored. Is I want to take two of my big hairpins like this, and I want to anchor the top part onto my head. If you would like to do a quick change or anything, all of your pins in the front and in the top need to go straight back. That way, when you need to change your wig, you can pull the back pins out and pop the whole thing off in one piece. You want it to be anchored more on the top. A lot of times, if a wig has a skin top, you can't pin through it, so try to find where the skin top ends and you want to aim right into that part. And again, you want to go forward, tilt it, and go back. Again, you want to tilt it forward, pin it, go back. Now, I usually start with two. Sometimes you need two, sometimes you need eight. It all depends on how big your head is, what you're doing, how crazy you're going to be on stage. If you're going to be shaking your head crazy, then you want to add as many pins as possible. Now, usually if I'm going to add more than two pins, I will pin here. If I can, I will pin in the center. I will also pin on the sides. If you take your eyebrows and you go straight back into your hair, pin right there. You can also pin further back on your crown back here. I'll show you now. So I'm pinning into the back of my crown right now. Hair pins, again, going straight back. I'm pinning into the sides right now. you want to do the back. Now remember when I showed you how to block a wig and I showed you that bottom edge of the wig? That isn't necessarily what you want to aim for. Usually what I like to do is I like to grab two or three pieces of the track, sometimes even the elastic band on the side, into the into my pin into my hairpin and then I snap I pull that and pin that into my head. Generally what you'd want to do is you want to do at least one on each corner, corner, corner. If you're going to be dancing a lot, or if you're going to be wearing the wig a long time, or if you just feel like it needs to be sturdier, you can take two or four pins on either side and pin them behind your ear and then in between. Now, remember how I let my, my flaps hang? This is the number one way people can realize you're wearing a lace wig is because your flaps will hang. So what you want to do is you want to pull the wig down to where it's going to be tight on your hair, on your forehead. And you want to go right behind that hairline, which is right where the, um, the foundation of the wig starts. And you want to pin up and diagonally back. And generally, sometimes I'll generally I will use more than one pin to hold my corner flaps down, especially if I'm going to be wearing it for a long time, because then you can kind of interlace them, interweave them, and then just like that, your flap will lay flat. You also can add spirit gum or glue just on the corners right here, corners, and hold it down. The best way to glue is to put the glue right on the lace, let it get tacky, hold it down, and get a powder puff. You can get those for 99 cents at any drugstore, and you powder puff it like this. Tap, 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 and that'll get your laces to lay down. When you add the, the huge hairpins through the top, you want to make sure that the hairpin goes into your hair or it'll go through the cap, through your hair, and then back out of the wig. If you're gonna do a quick change or you have to rip it off really quick, it's gonna get stuck because it's gonna be anchored in really well. So you wanna make sure that the pin goes all the way into your hair and stops into your hair. Take your back pins out, grab the back edge of the wig, and you can just pull it off from the front, much like that. Sometimes you'll get one or two that'll stick a little more, so just kind of angle it over to that side and pull. And that's how you properly put on and remove a lace front wig.